In this video, we will understand glycemic index and glycemic load and how can it affect blood sugar levels. Let's start with glycemic index. Glycemic index is a rating of food on a scale of 0 to 100. It is categorized as low, medium, and high. Higher the GI, higher the ability of food items to spike the blood glucose. Now we will look into how GI was determined. In a study, a group of 10 people were given 50 grams of available carbohydrates in two foods, one reference food, and one test food. Post-consumption blood sugar levels were checked after every 15 minutes for two hours, then the results were plotted in a graph for both types of foods. The GI value was calculated based on the area of the graph covered by test food when compared to reference food and percentage value. Reference food, in this case, was glucose or white bread but currently, we only consider glucose. Hence, GI compares available carbohydrates of any given food item to glucose in terms of blood glucose raising capacity, where glucose is considered to have a score of 100. GI for a particular food is always constant. This is the list of some common foods and their GIs. Now let's look at the problems in it. Do note that in the original experiment, two foods have the same available carbohydrates and then blood glucose responses were charted. So GI comparison always assumes equal quantities of available carbohydrates in both foods. This means that if the GI of rice is 60 and corn syrup is 90, then you are comparing their sugar spike effect at equal quantities of available carbohydrates present in them. But usually, the general diet would have a small quantity of corn syrup and quite a lot of rice. So if one is consuming available carbohydrates of 5 grams from corn syrup and 70 grams from rice, doesn't it make more sense to compare 5 grams versus 70 grams rather than 5 grams versus 5 grams or 70 grams versus 70 grams? Hence portion size should be considered, which brings us to the topic. Glycemic load. Just like glycemic index, Glycemic load is also a rating of food based on how much it raises the blood sugar levels, but it takes the portion size of food in its calculation. Glycemic load is calculated by multiplying the available carbohydrates in a food portion with GI of that food, and then it is divided by 100. Similar to GI, GL is also categorized into low, medium, and high. Let's take an example of watermelon. GI of watermelon is 72 which comes under the high category of GI. But if we consume 100 grams of watermelon containing 5 grams of available carbohydrates then the GL would be 3.6 which is under the low category. Do you see the importance of the quantity of food? To re-explain it logically, let's go back to our previous example. Over the period of some hours, 70 grams of rice can sustainably keep blood glucose on the higher side, while 5 grams of corn syrup alone cannot achieve that effect. A food that has a lower GI can raise your blood sugar level as well when consumed excessively and the same is true for vice versa. Music